Okay. It's game time. Shoot! Down. Hasta luego. I have this. Feast on this. What up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to my DLC exclusive weapon review of Resident Evil 4 Remake in 4K HDR, if YouTube reads the HDR anyway. <laughs> So naturally, this weapon review will feature weapons specifically seen in the recently released DLC mode, Separate Ways, as well as a singular new weapon exclusive to one of the newly added characters for the mercenaries. As per usual with my weapon reviews, I got a bit to say before we dive into the showcase, so please conveniently follow this timestamp on the screen if your impatience is growing thick. Just know my voice will be omnipresent because I'm a proud commentator that can only convey this information through speech. Now, there are quite a few weapons that you all have already seen if you watched my original weapon review of the main game. In fact, there will only be five never-before-seen weapons and new variants of three already-seen weapons in this entire video. If you haven't watched my original weapon review of RE4 Remake, I highly recommend that you do so you can have a much clearer understanding of how I'll go about this weapon review. For those who have, which I expect is the majority of you, this review will basically basically be an extension of that video and be conducted in the same fashion. However, like I said, there aren't many brand new weapons to go over, so to save myself considerable time and effort, any weapon we have seen before that have the same exact attributes as Leon using it in the main game, I will speedily overview it with Ada and test fire it since she's a female, but I won't conduct enemy testing again since it'll likely yield the same results. All that being said, this review should be dramatically shorter than the main game's weapon review. If the DLC had come out sooner, before I finish the main review, of course I would have preferred to merge it all into the same video. But alas, it'll be its own video, and it's not like I haven't done it before for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Resident Evil Village, and even Reverse for its thin line of updates. Yeah, I'm still a little salty about that. Anyway, I think that's all I need to put out to prologue this review, so without further ado, let's delve into the DLC weapons of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Alright, and just like the main game's review, I'm gonna first introduce you all to the hub of the Separate Ways DLC weapon review. So, I'm gonna be using the Village Center. This is actually one of the places I wanted to use in the main game's review, it was just way too far away from a merchant. In Ada scenario, however, she's right near a merchant, just on the other side of this building. So this will be a great place, bathed in the overcast natural light, in a similar fashion where I conducted all the weapons of Leon's game in. So, yep, yeah, this will do just great. Alright, so I'm gonna stick with the same order of weapon class, beginning with the knives. And we are gonna start with an already seen before weapon, the kitchen knife. Alright, and here's a very brief look at it again in the inventory. Look at those stats, but it's not gonna matter because I'm not gonna do any enemy testing with it because we've seen this in Leon's scenario already. So, just to demonstrate Ada wielding it and using it. There's a good look right there. Here we go. Starting with regular slashes. And let's get this angle right here. There you go. All right, and now let's check her out stabbing with it. What is different about her wielding it, she holds it in the opposite direction that Leon does. And then finally, the run and dash. There you go. All right, that is literally all I'm gonna do with weapons that we've seen and tested already with Leon. Because when it comes to damage rate, the damage is exactly the same as Leon, so it will take roughly the same amount of slashes with Ada. Now for the next knife, another already seen before one, the boot knife. Very quick inspection of the specs. Twice as powerful as the kitchen knife. Alright, let's test it out with Ada. Here's her wielding it. And she puts it away really quickly. Here we go. Alright, now stabbing. Alright. 
All right, and that is Ada's test of the boot knife. Now for the first brand new weapon, the tactical knife. So this is Ada's personal knife, just like Leon and his combat knife. And here it is in game. The tactical knife is described as a knife that has meant the difference between life and death on more than a few missions. It is an indispensable weapon for an agent. All right, I like that. And you notice it has a slight red design, like along the seams and everything. I love that. Red and black are my favorite colors. Definitely resembling Ada and her color scheme. All right, take a look at the statistics. I'm pretty sure these are the same exact as Leon's combat knife. So for all intents and purposes, this is Ada's version of the combat knife. They just call it tactical knife. All right, so here we go. Here's her wielding it. Nice, so let's go ahead and give it a test. All right, now let's give it the stabbing motion. Just a little faster than the other two knives, go figure. Here you go. All right, so now we will actually test this out on an enemy. Now I'm gonna keep it the same as the main game's weapon review, so knives, pistols, machine guns will all be tested on a standard Ganado. Now it's not the same exact Ganado as Leon tested it on, so there's a very small possibility that the variance might be just enough to where it might take a totally different number of slashes, but I've learned a bit about this game since the main review. It turns out that the damage statistics of a knife are probably dependent on the amount of time that the knife is digging through through the flesh, so that's why some tests are inconsistent. It makes a lot of sense. So do not take the results of this upcoming test to heart. So here we go, let's test the tactical knife on a Ganado. All right, so it took 13 slashes to defeat a standard Ganado. Again, conducting this entire review in standard mode, just like the main game. And while one of those hits indicated a headshot because he grabbed his face, I didn't see a slash mark on his face, so I don't think that was real. But anyway, there you go. 13 slashes to defeat a Ganado. Now let's try stabs. <laughs> All right, so that took 11 stabs to defeat a standard Ganado in standard mode. So yeah, stabs, just based on that test, might be a little more efficient than slashes. I could advocate because stabs in general are a little faster and you have a little more control over that. So yeah, go figure. All right, so now we're back at the merchant and we are going to upgrade the knife. Now, of course, I'm gonna give you guys the full price of the weapon, including buying it outright from the merchant. So to rebuy it once you sell it, it costs a straight 10,000 pesetas. All yours, stranger. No special voice line from the merchant, of course, being just a knife. And now we go to the tune-up section. Here we go, let's add it up. This kind of work is about finesse, stranger. Little bit goes a long way. You'll see. <sighs> That's about all I can do for this weapon. Although... No, never mind. Well, we've given this one all we have to give. Treat it with the respect it deserves, yeah? All right, so the exclusive upgrade, just like Leon's combat knife, is increasing the attack speed by one and a half times. All right, and of course it can be repaired as you progress through the game because when you use up the durability, it costs to repair. I'm not including that cost in there though, because that is circumstantial. All right, now let's go back to the center and test it out with the full upgrades. All right, here we go. Much faster. Now let's try the stabbing motion. Dang, she's a Quinoichi. Uh, 
All right, let's go ahead and test the tactical knife fully upgraded against Ganado now. And once again, starting with slashes. As soon as he notices me. Ouch. Okay. You're gonna pay for that. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, only six slashes to defeat the Ganado. And you notice I didn't just go ham with the slashing. I did very simple single slashes like that for just a little bit more consistency. All right, now let's try stabs. All right, it only took four stabs to defeat the Ganado with full upgrades on the tactical knife in standard mode. Yep, this thing's pretty neat when it's fully upgraded. Alrighty then, that is going to conclude the tactical knife. Until that one night in Raccoon City changed everything. Now for the last knife, the elite knife. This is Ada's equivalent to Leon's primal knife. And of course, here it is in game. It is described as a sharp knife that never breaks. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's indestructible. Personally, I liked Leon's description more where it mentioned infinite possibilities, just teasing at the aspect of infinity. But that is because unlike Leon's knife, this one you get indestructible right out of the gate. This has no upgrades on it, yet it's indestructible. So it's really nice to have once you unlock it. Speaking of which, so the Elite Knife is one of two unlockable bonus weapons in separate ways. In order to obtain the Elite Knife, you must complete all seven merchant requests. Once you do that, it'll become available in the extra content shop, and you can purchase it for 1,000 challenge points. All right, so here she is holding it. Really nice and shiny looking. Now, let's test it out. Of course, it has the nice sound difference when she slashes around with it, the metallic sound. All right, now the stabbing motion. All right, and a dash and slash. All right, now let's take this to the Ganado testing grounds and see how a Ganado fares against it. <laughs> All right, I should note that the power of this knife is 0 0.05 points weaker than the tactical knife. So this knife may take more slashes and stabs than the tactical. Let's find out. All right, so like I said, consistency is not a strong point in this game. It's probably because there was a small difference in the way I was testing the knife out. With the tactical knife, I was doing random slashes like this. Well, on this test, I decided to do straight single slashes like this. For all I know, that may have made all the difference. Just in case, I am willing to try that test again. This time I'll do some random slashes, see if we get any different results. Okay, so yeah, I took one extra slash there. Well, I got some of these back slashes in there. So yeah, it's possible, actually. You might have better luck if you do straight slashing like this without just going all over the place like that. Of course, personally, I think it's better if you do stabs, which I'm gonna test now. All right, that took me nine stabs. So, turned out the same as one of the slashing tests. So yeah, you're looking for the least amount of stabs possible. Probably go for the head and do stabbing motions. That's your best bet. Now let's return to the merchant and upgrade this baby. All right, so if you sold the elite knife, it'll cost you 50,000 pesetas to repurchase it. Go figure, it was the same with the primal knife. All yours, stranger. Still no special line. <laughs> now, the only statistic that you could upgrade on this knife is the power, straight up. We're 
just starting to get an idea of your taste. Sad to say that's the end of the road for that weapon. Packs a punch. <laughs> Enough for most, at least. All right, now the exclusive upgrade for this one is increasing the power by two. So, our current power is 0.75, so applying this will up it to 1.5. Well, we've given this one all we have to give. Treat it with the respect. There's your total price. All right, now let's test it out. Well, actually, there's no point in testing it out here because the only difference is the power, which you're not gonna see just slashing at air. So, we're gonna go straight to the enemy testing here. All right, should note that the firepower now being double the maximum, this is the most powerful knife now compared to the tactical knife. So check this out. Slash first. Holy shit! It only took two slashes to defeat a Ganado with the fully upgraded Elite Knife. It truly is elite. All right, let's try stabs. It'll probably take around the same. Let's find out. Okay, that took three stabs. However, he went down on his knees, so I feel like it registered as a leg hit. So let's do it again. Try to make sure he doesn't go down on his knees. See, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, two to three stabs, depending on where you hit him, to defeat the Ganado. I wonder, while we have the time, since these are going by really quickly, let me go for a face shot, see if it only possibly takes one hit. That'd be nice. Nope. But you could rest assured if you melee after a face hit like that, he will be dead. This is all standard mode, just to remind everyone. All right, that is gonna ultimately conclude the Elite Knife, as well as all knives that Ada Wong uses. And now I'm gonna do exactly what I did with Leon and show you every possible way that Ada could use her knife. I will be using her fully upgraded tactical knife. So once again, pay some attention to the amount of durability that is lost with each use of the knife. All right, now let's move into the throwable sub weapons, which happen to be all the same from Leon's campaign. So quickly starting with the regular hand grenade. Quickly glance over it. All right, and once again, the hand grenade is based off the M67 fragmentation grenade. And let's test it out with Ada. Let's get this chicken in the blast. <sighs> Two 
<laughs> it got decimated. Well, kinda, it's still all intact. Would've been nice if it blew the smithereens and just feathers flew everywhere, though. There, I got my karma. <laughs> All right, operates exactly the same, so that was a quick overview of the hand grenade with Ada. Moving on to the next sub-weapon, the heavy grenade. All right, once again, quick glance at it. There you go. And another quick reference, the heavy grenade is based off the M26 hand grenade. Testing it out with Ada. This is a bigger explosion, so I'm gonna throw it much further. Maybe get that chicken in the distance. <laughs> and now for my karma. Dang, that was big. Ooh, get a nice air explosion, why don't we? That was cool. All right, well, just like that, that is gonna be it for overviewing the heavy grenade with Ada Wong. Now for the last grenade, the flash grenade. All right, quick glance at the flash grenade in the inventory. And once again, the flash grenade is based off the M84 stun grenade. All right, and testing it out. <laughs> all right, and we all know how that will work. So that's gonna be it for testing the flash grenade with Ada. I'm going really quickly through these. Now for the last throwable sub weapons, the chicken eggs. We're gonna very quickly go over these. Just for laughs, here's a reference to real life chicken eggs. A white, a brown, and I even found a gold one for you guys. Unfortunately, in my travels towards making this rep interview, I don't currently have a white egg in my inventory, but that's okay. They all operate the same when it comes to using them as weapons. So I'm just gonna simply throw them at a couple beloved characters. First, the merchant again. <laughs> and the couple golden eggs that I have. <laughs> he didn't even react. Maybe because he was still at the end of his original animation. You're kidding, right? Come on. Really? You're kidding, right? Come on. Really? All right, so he has two voice lines with the... <laughs> All right, that worked out. That's gonna be it for the chicken eggs with Ada Wong using them. All right, once again, turning the heat up and moving into the firearms, starting with the pistols. Now the first one is an already seen before one, the black tail. Although this is not exactly the same black tail. So judging from the name of the weapon and the description, there is a very small difference. So it's known in separate ways as the Blacktail AC, which I'm confident stands for Ada Custom. And here's why. Here's the description. A striker fired handgun. That's exactly the same as Leon's Blacktail. This weapon, custom made for Ada, is designed to prioritize durability and reliability over accuracy. And from the statistics, that's actually true because this Blacktail has a couple differentiating statistics compared to Leon's Blacktail. First of all, the power is 0.4 points lower than Leon's, so it's starting off weaker. And what's also worse, unfortunately, is the precision. Leon Leon's Blacktail has a precision of 4.2, while Ada's here is only 4.0. So, I think what they were really going for here is that since this is Ada's starting pistol, they matched the statistics to Leon's starting pistol, the Silver Ghost, more closely. Pretty sure that was the aim there. Alrighty, so of course the Blacktail compared to its OG counterpart in RE4 once more, and then, once again, its real-life counterpart is the Springfield Armory XD. All right, so Ada starts right off with it, so there is no collecting it in the game. All right, so here we are in game. Here's her holding it. All right, let's go ahead and test it out with Ada here. Hmm? <laughs> and of 
course, let's get the tactical reload. Awesome. She's an agent, so she has experience, obviously. All right. So now, let's go find a standard Ganado and test it out, since it does have a slightly different firepower than Leon's Blacktail. I expect it's going to take roughly the same amount of shots as Leon's Silver Ghost did. Let's see. All right, so it took five shots from Ada's Blacktail to defeat a Ganado. Based on that test alone, it took one more shot than it took Leon with his Silver Ghost with the same firepower. That could be because of the specific Ganado I decided to test it on in that original weapon review. It was an early Ganado. On top of that, it was a female Ganado, so that could make a difference. But yeah, point is, it took five shots in this test just now. Now, real quick, I've got to demonstrate the close shot. Here's Ada holding the weapon with the side aim. Just to show that. All right, now let's go back to the merchant and upgrade the Blacktail AC. Now to, to apply some upgrades. So first of all, if you sell your Blacktail at any point, it'll cost you 12,000 pesetas to repurchase. All yours, stranger. Once again, since it's Ada's personal weapon, he doesn't really have a special voice line for it. So, let's go into the tune-up, and let's upgrade all of these statistics and get you your total price. If you want a fight in ch We're starting to get an idea of your tastes, friend. Dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. This kind of work is about finesse. You've exhausted our normal range of services for this weapon. If you're interested in something more, well, you catch my drift. All right, and the exclusive, of course, is increasing the firepower by well, one and a half times. Make up for a... It doesn't get any better than that. It's a veritable work of art, mate. And yeah, upon reinspection, now the firepower matches Leon's fully upgraded Black Tail. However, the precision is still 0.2 points lower. So, may match the power, but this will always be a slightly less precise Black Tail compared to Leon's. All right, now let's take it to our hub center and test it out once more. Here we go. Still much faster firing weapon, I like that. And reload speed is lightning fast. All right, now let's go back and test it on a standard Ganado. All right, so it only took two shots from the Blacktail to defeat a standard Ganado in standard mode with the Blacktail fully upgraded. And that is consistent with Leon's test in the original review. While it's not the same Ganado, it still took the same amount of shots. So you can rest assured that statistics, while they may be various, they're not too far apart. All righty, well, that's going to conclude the Blacktail AC. Now for the next pistol, the Punisher, another one we've seen before. Now at first glance, it does appear to be exactly the same as the Punisher Leon uses. However, one small difference once again in the name and the description. It's known as the Punisher MC, the handgun that retains excellent penetration power with low recoil. It is custom made by the merchant, so you could probably assume that MC stands for Merchant Custom. All right, but all the statistics as we're comparing to Leon's here are exactly the same for now. 
I will emphasize more in a little bit. For now, once again, compare it to its OG RE4 counterpart, and then its real life counterpart, the FN57. So in a brand new game, the Punisher is available from the first merchant you come across, which happens to be the one that I'm near, over there. So, it becomes available from the first time you meet him, but you could get the laser sight attachment for free if you buy it in that instance. Alright, so here's Ada holding it. Nice. Let's test it out. Oh, that bloody chicken. <laughs> Alrighty, there you go. Now, I fully expect this test to go down just like when Leon tested it, because literally every statistic is the same, but you never know. Let's find out. Alright, so here's the side aim, of course, with the Punisher. Completely oblivious. Alrighty, so the consistency is the fact that it took the same amount of shots as when Leon tested it in the main game. The inconsistency is the fact that the Blacktail, even though it has 0.1 higher firepower than the Punisher, took one more shot than the test I just performed. So, yeah. Again, don't take these statistics to heart. There's a lot of variance, obviously. Alright. Now let's go back to the merchant and fully upgrade the Punisher MC. So to purchase the Punisher MC, it'll cost you 10,000 pesetas. All yours, stranger. Unfortunately, for separate ways, he does not have his penetration line from the Punisher. I do not know why they didn't include it here. Is it because it's MC, not just straight Punisher? You would think it would be more appropriate since it's the merchant's custom design. But anyway, I digress. Now, let's purchase the laser sight along with it, because once again, I'm including the price of the laser sight with the overall price of the weapon. So if you miss the discount for this upon the first merchant, it'll cost you 3,000 pesetas from then on. All yours, stranger. No special voice line for that either. All right, so now let's tune up the Punisher and get you your full price. Dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. There you are, as you wish. This kind, sad to say. And of course, keeping to the usual exclusive for the Punisher, Your this will penetrate through five targets. Hands, that is a top-notch weapon. You really don't settle for anything less than the best, do ya? All right, now, this is where it differentiates from Leon's Punisher. So, I'm gonna go to the center part of the hub. So if we examine it now with full upgrades and the laser aim attached, we can see that statistically, Ada's Punisher MC ends up 0.3 points more powerful than Leon's. Every other statistic remains the same. So, in my personal opinion playing this game, the Punisher is a little more useful in Ada's scenario because because of that firepower. Alrighty, now let's test it out. Huh? All right, now let's test out the fully upgraded Punisher against Ganado. This might be interesting because it's more powerful than when Leon tested it fully upgraded. All right, that's to be expected. It only took two shots for the fully upgraded Punisher to take down a Ganado. Considering it's even more powerful than Leon's, it was gonna take no more than two shots because that's how much it took Leon to defeat a Ganado. But I was also pretty sure that it wasn't gonna take as little as one shot. That would be way overpowered for a Punisher. <laughs> it's possible to the head. Ooh, headshot from a distance. Love that. All right, well that's a great way to conclude the Punisher MC. Now for yet another already seen before pistol, the Red 9. Now unlike the previous two, this one's not gonna have any exclusive ADA features about it. So a very brief overview of its statistics again. There's absolutely nothing different about it. Here's its OG counterpart. And its real life counterpart, the Mauser C96, Red 9.
All right, so here's Ada holding it. If I'm gonna be brutally honest, the red nine doesn't fit with her as much as Leon. There we go. So, the red nine isn't available until the first merchant you come across in chapter four in separate ways, along with a stock, of course. However, what's very odd is there is a discount available for the red nine, but it's only available in New Game Plus, and it's in chapter three, not chapter four. Very peculiar, and a little bit of, like, backwards logic there. <laughs> so, let's test it out with Ada. <laughs> it's hilarious that she's just like, huh? When she runs out of ammo, as if she's incapable of doing such a feat. Of course, there's no tactical reload for the Red Nine. It's the same regardless. All right, now let's quickly check it out or quick with the stock attached. There you go. Here we go. Much more stable. Alrighty then. So, it being exactly the same as Leon's, I'm not gonna bother testing this on an enemy. Instead, we're gonna go straight to the merchant and upgrade it. I'll put this all in the same clip. It warms my heart to see you stop by, stranger. So, first, I'm gonna sell it off because I still need to give you their full price, even though it's probably exactly the same as Leon's game. But I'm still gonna add up the full price of all the weapons at the end of the review, just like I did for Leon's game. So, it's necessary. To purchase it from the merchant, it'll cost you 14,000 pesetas. All yours, stranger. Not an avid gun collector line, huh? Too freaking bad. However, he does have the line for the stock. Gun will look great with that attached. Why did they include that, but not any other previous line of all the weapons we reviewed so far? Lazy. All right, now let's tune up the Red Nine. Try that on for size. Dazzled, are you? <laughs> Our craftsmanship demands no less. We're starting to get an idea. And of course, the exclusive is exactly the same. Oh, that is a top-notch weapon. You really don't settle for anything else I can help. With a final firepower of 4.05. So let's just quickly test it again with full upgrades. I'm empty. Oh, she actually set a line this time. Perfect. And finally with the stock. Fucking chicken. <laughs> All right, well, that's gonna complete the Red Nine. Now for the one and only never before seen pistol, which happens to be the last pistol in the lineup, the XM96E1. Now this is the only weapon that I will show from the mercenaries rather than separate ways, because that's the only place you can see this weapon. This one looks really nice, I have to say. Now this pistol can only be used by Albert Wesker in The Mercenaries. And here it is in game, still looking really nice. So the XM96E1 is described as a rugged handgun with decent firepower. It has a low ammo capacity, but hits hard. I like that description, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so take a look at those statistics, although as you can see, there are no upgrade stats at all because this is exclusive to Wesker and Mercenaries. I actually like that they did that. They didn't indicate that in any way, shape, or form it could be upgraded, unlike when Wesker used the Silver Ghost in the Mercenaries and OG RE4, which had all the full stats. But anyway, so check out that firepower. Pretty good firepower, I have to say. Although not as powerful as some other weapons fully upgraded, you know, because of their exclusivity. That ammo capacity is fairly weak. <laughs> Reload speed could be better. Rate of fire could be better. So it's just a powerhouse and nothing more by the looks of it. 
All right, so like I kind of just indicated, Wesker does not have this in the OG RE4. Rather, he uses Leon's Silver Ghost with a silencer attached. In this game, of course, he gets his own personal weapon, and it is based off of the Beretta 92FS Vertec Enox. This is the first Enox that we've seen in Resident Evil in quite a while. In a main game, we haven't seen an Enox since the very first Resident Evil game, specifically Director's cut. Since then, we have seen the Enox reappear in Operation Raccoon City. It is one of the weapons the Spec Ops can use. So that was technically the last time we saw this in any Resident Evil media. And just a special shout out, Alice in the Resident Evil movie franchise, the very first movie, does get to use this temporarily. Alrighty then. So, being mercenaries, there's not gonna be a lot of room to test this out without enemies present. So I gotta be really quick about this. So here we go. All right, so here's Wesker. I'm just gonna run around with it in hand. Let me try to get into the sunlight. All right, here we go. Looking nice. Beautiful. Now let's test it out. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a full reload. It's a tactical reload regardless of what you do. Just an honorable mention, he can use the Killer 7 as well. All right, let's actually test it out on an enemy. However, this is mercenaries mode, so it's not really gonna be fair to compare it to all the other pistols before it, especially right now because the enemies are as weak as they possibly can be. See, only two shots. Possibly it would take a maximum of three or four shots, especially if you hit the leg or something. All right, so I'm a little later in the match, and as you can see, it took three shots now. So mercenaries, the enemies progressively get tougher as you go. By the end of it, it would probably take as much as six shots. I'm not even joking. All right, that is gonna conclude the XM96E1. I really like this pistol, I have to admit. And that's gonna end all DLC pistols. Mine or Sadler's? That all depends on you. You think that gun's gonna be enough? Interesting. I'll do it. But, cost you extra. The new coordinates. And no, 